say good morning to Lucy and Martin with Homes Under the Hammer. Hello. Now, with the property market more uncertain than it used to be, everybody has to make their own decisions. You have to do your research and trust your instincts. Well, one way to gauge how the market is performing is to see for yourself. And one way to do that is to visit your local auction. huge amount of property up for auction. Now, thousands of lots go up for sale every month all around the country. So, why not nip down to your local auction house and see what is on offer? Meanwhile, here are the properties we found for you on today's show. I'm in scenic Devon, where this tired timber cottage sits on a site to die for. Your eye is drawn straight away to that! This basement flat in London makes me look on the bright side. It's not dark, it's not dingy. I think it's going to be a good one. And in Sunderland, sometimes words fail me on the potential of a property, but not this time. Either way, that's a whoopee doos dog tail wagging ka ching investment. All three of these properties went to auction. We found out who bought them and for how much when they went under the hammer. Sir, yours, best of luck. I'm in the beautiful county of Devon on the edge of Dartmoor National Park in an area called Lee Moor. There are wonderful views down to Plymouth Sound. This area is also known for its china clay industry, a material used in ceramics and paper, amongst other things. So you never know, part of your bathroom suite or even your walls could have started off down here. Well, I'm in a village with a rather unusual name. It's called Water. Now, I suppose you expect I'm going to get some cheap jokes out of that, such as, what a lot of property for the money, or what are we going to see? But of course I'm not. I am actually here to see a property which, by virtue of its description in the auction catalogue, has me intrigued already. The catalogue described this lot as appealing to people who want to build a grand design replacement building to take full advantage of the location and outlook. That got me interested, along with its guide price of 90 to 110,000. Well, not the best of first impressions, it has to be said. Through the front door, uh, through what was, I imagine, the original kitchen that's all been removed now, you've got a, a loo and a separate bathroom there, and through into, I guess, the main living area. Open fire, that's good to see. But the moment you walk into this room, your eye is drawn straight away to that! And I mean, wow! What an incredible view. I mean, all the way out to Plymouth Sound there, and all the time I've been doing the show, I have never seen a house with such a spectacular, spectacular view out the window. The scenery really does take your breath away, and so does the rest of the house, but not in such a good way. Clearly, the stripping back has begun, but it looks like whoever started threw in the towel, probably overwhelmed by the scale of the task. Wow, 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 wow. Seeing a property in this state really does help you appreciate the size of the job you're taking on. Outside, with the sun glinting on the sea on the horizon, you could easily be distracted from the property itself. But there's no getting away from the fact it needs some serious repair work and you'd be unlikely to get a mortgage on a house of this construction. However, it's in a prime spot and I'm starting to think the real potential lies not in the house itself, but in the plot and its surroundings. So, let's be honest, the likelihood is you are going to knock that building down. The good news is that the lot comes with a quarter of an acre, approximately, of land. This is it here. As you can see, it slopes up somewhat. But I'm thinking straight away, why don't we use this land to build an entirely new property here? Obviously, you're going to have to get planning permission. But I don't think restoring that is a starter and the potential maybe even to dig into this bit of ground here and put your house of dreams with that view. Oh, now it's getting great. <laughs> it 
it certainly is a great opportunity. To find out more, we invited the auctioneer who sold it to give us his opinion on this house, which went to auction with a guide price of between ninety and £110,000. The potential for the plot, and it is a plot, is to create something that takes advantage of the view. It's a dream sheet of white paper, really, to start from scratch. As far as planning is concerned, Dartmoor National Park is happily just over there, and they have probably tighter controls, quite rightly, for Dartmoor National Park. Um, here is a slightly better local authority as far as giving you the chance to put up a really dream special home. Bearing in mind the local market, what does he think a dream home built here might be worth? A high-quality contemporary bungalow built on this spot could fetch as much as £400,000. Let's face it, on a scale of 0 to 10, the property itself wouldn't score very highly. But the location, well, from my point of view, that gets an 11. And all it needs is an adventurous soul to come along here and build a property fitting of this incredible spot. Let's find out who bought it when it went under the hammer. It is a single-storey, three-bedroom bungalow, a wonderful opportunity, big gardens and grounds, lovely view. I'm going to risk the top of the guide and say I'm not starting less than 110. 110, thank you. At 112, 112, 114, 116, 116, 118, 120, 122, 124, 126, 128, 130, 132, would you go to 133? You sure? OK. At 132, four in the background. 134. 134, you're in. 134. Five, if it'll help you. 134 is to the back, and there was 134 and a half there. Thank you. 135, straight back. 135 and a half. 136. At 136 and a half. 136, 137. At 137 and a half. 137, at 138. 138 and a half. 139. 39 and a half. 140, 140, 140 is in once. 140 twice. Good sign, they're leaving the room. At one, <laughs> okay, 140 once, 140 twice, here we go. At 140, gentleman in the back of the room has got it at 140. So, congratulations. Eager for the hammer to fall on that bid for 140,000 was electrician Ryan. He lives in nearby Plymouth with his wife Sarah and their three children. This purchase represents something of a homecoming for him. I met with Ryan back at the property to find out his plans. Ryan, good to meet you. Congratulations. I have to say I'm very jealous. This is an amazing location, isn't it? It is, certainly, yes. Um, it's a lovely plot and we're really pleased with our purchase. So why did you want to buy it? Well, basically we needed a project. Um, I've finished the, the house I live in. I've converted the loft and various things. and. Uh, Got itchy feet now, wanted to move on and needed a bigger project, so this is it. And do you know the area? Yeah, I do know the area. I actually come from this village. Um, I lived in a cottage just up the road, so I know it very well and had a bit of local knowledge that this, this is a good, a good plot. So for Ryan, it's a case of going back to his roots to build a brand new home for him and his family. Going back to my roots, yeah. What would you like to build? Well, I think it'll only be a bungalow. I think there's restrictions on planning. Um, so it'll be a bungalow of some description. So do you have any ideas at this stage for preliminary plans? Yeah, well, my wife's a chartered building surveyor, so she's oh. going to do all the drawings. Um, she's onto that already, not really my department. <laughs> she's doing all of that. But we want to uh, we hopefully move the house back slightly to keep the gardens on the south side. Um, because this is pretty much to the front of the plot and that would enable us, if they will let us do it, to live in this while we're building it. Ah. Which would be a nice little rent saver. So, in fact, the new property wouldn't share the footprint of this one at all? Hopefully not, because this one's really in the wrong part of the plot. We'd like to move it backwards a bit and then have the garden and the, and the patio areas on this side. Right. They might be a bit funny about that. Yeah, they might, they might well not let us, in which case we'll just knock it down and, and, and build on. How are you going to maximise the views? Well, I don't think, because of the height restrictions, maybe because of the bungalow, we're not going to be able to elevate or get a... hopefully go into the loft space of the, of the property, but I don't think they'll permit dormer construction. 
So it would just be Valak's window, so hopefully it would be a nice view from up there. But the view is one of the polling points for the, for the property, it's just stunning. And what about down on the ground floor? Yeah, we're going to have a lot of glass on the back, um, bifold doors, you know, going through, right through the back of it, out onto patio areas. And the idea then is to live in it, to... Yeah, to the, well, hopefully, if we can get permission to build something really nice, then we'll stay for sure. But if we don't, then maybe we will build it and move on. Not 100% sure on that yet. Extending the existing footprint of the property will be less straightforward from a planning point of view. But it could be well worth the hassle to take advantage of the views. And Ryan certainly brings some handy skills to the table. Tell me a bit more about you. What do you do? I'm an electrician. Oh, great. Yeah, I've got my own business. Um, it's all going well. Even through the recession, I've been quite busy. So great. That's good. But you can do all the work of the electrics on, yeah, on the I new Yeah, I do most things. Most things plastering. As soon as it's up and dry and watertight, I'll pretty much be on my own then to do the rest of the, rest of the project. Um, but I've got good friends, builders, carpenters. They'll all muck in and give me a hand to get it up. What about this? existing bungalow yeah. then. T tell me, what are you going to do with this? I mean, you're just going <clears> to <throat> make it habitable or what? Temporarily, I'm going to make it habitable, yeah. I'm going to locate a kitchen into one of the back bedrooms, um, just generally paint right through, new carpets through, um, put a new a shower in there, tile that, and just get it livable for the time. Because even if they make us knock it down, what I save in rent, because you know to rent a house is £800 a month, so what I save, I'll get back the time I'm here anyway while the planning's going through. So what's the best case and worst case scenario for the amount of time you're going to have to live here? How long do you think it's going to take? Worst case, I would say 18 months to, to build it, because I do a lot myself, um, but it could be done in 12 months. What kind of budget have you got? Yeah, well, we're hoping to build the property for under 100, 100,000, somewhere around there. And that's, you know, with me doing a lot of the labour. <clears throat> so that's basically the budget. If you do get to build something which you, you, you're particularly proud of, uh, is that it? Then are you going to stay here? I think we might. If we like, if we adjust to living in the country and uh, the wife likes living up here, then we'll probably stay if we get, you know, build the right property, yeah. Well, listen, good luck with it all. Congratulations, you've got a great, uh, well, a great plot, actually. Amazing. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, what a great result for Ryan. Not only has he got a superb bit of land and a usable building, but it's in the village where he grew up. And I'm sure his family will be delighted to return here. Still, there is a year to a year and a half's worth of work to get this place sorted out, or rather, to get rid of this place and put something suitable in its place. Find out how he gets on with the planning and everything else later in the show. This is vibrant Hackney in East London. Now, Hackney's history means it's had its fair share of ups and downs, but right now, there's a lot going on here in the run-up to the Olympics, with much promise of better transport links, job opportunities for residents, and a great big boost for arts and culture too. It really is a one-off opportunity for this borough to shine for sure. Got a souvenir in London one of the major boosts to this ever-popular part of London will be that the borough will be properly linked to the Tube network for the first time by an extension of the East London line. That's being extended to carry passengers to the Olympics just up the road. Now, with all these developments, I reckon Hackney's got it, or certainly getting it. I'm here to see this lower ground floor flat. It's got a guide price of £210,000. Now, it's got its own entrance, which I love, and it's part of this four-storey mid-terrace. Unusually, it's got its own back garden, possibly with the potential for an extension. Let's take a look. I never promised you a rose garden. Flats on quite a busy road, which will not appeal to everyone, but the promise of a garden and a fair amount of space for a London flat does appeal. Well, <laughs> this is what you call a hallway. I love it. Huge amounts of space, although it is covered in wood chip wallpaper. 
There's just a vast area here, wasted. I mean, this is a London property. You could easily fit another bathroom in here. Look, you've got a bathroom down here, but you could probably change the layout with this property. We're going into this really big room. Probably, I would say this has been used as a sitting room. Not ideal with the boiler in here. I'll try and change that, stick it in the kitchen. But you've got this beautiful bay window. These old shutters, once these were restored, they could look fantastic. Now, something I'm noticing is that I'm sort of falling backwards. You can see this floor is definitely on the slant. And maybe that's because, ah, that's the culprit. A great big crack running right the way through this wall. Now, I think I'd contact a structural engineer, get that checked out. Dare I say the word subsidence? I think whoever bids for this needs to know that structurally this property is sound. But with that said, I really like this little flat. It's not dark, it's not dingy. I think it's going to be a good one. And in every home, there will be lots of time. There will be all yours, you might have been at It's great, lots of space, so plenty of potential. Assuming there's no subsidence, I would think about changing around some of these walls to maybe add a bathroom and make that bedroom bigger. I think it's safe to say that this flat has an awful lot of square footage in its favour. It's got a good sized kitchen space, although, look, this has got to go straight in the tip, and a really nice lounge area. I think you could do with changing it all, rejuggling it, but you've got a good space, lots of light coming in from the garden. I'm just wondering whether or not you would be able to have an extension out there, some lovely doors leading out to that garden. I'm going to go and check it out. At the moment, access to the back garden is through what I would call the back bedroom. And what do I find there? Well, this garden really needs to be attacked by some shears and a lawnmower. And then you'll see a real pretty little walled garden. Get this old thing knocked down. And uh, you've got quite a lot of space out here for London. Now, I think a tiny little extension would really benefit this property. And you may even get that within permitted development, which means you might not even have to apply for planning permission. But it's worth checking out with your local council first. But this space is a real golden nugget. In the jungle. Lovely flat, good-sized garden, potential to change these things around a bit, and all for that guide price of 210,000 in Hackney. We asked a local estate agent along to hear his opinion on this Hackney hideaway. The property is a bit different. It, it needs some refurbishment throughout. It needs some structural attention as well by the looks of it. Um, but ultimately, it's a, a sort of property that a lot of uh, people will take pleasure in restoring and uh, making into a, a lovely family home. So assuming there are no structural problems, what would he expect to get for this flat as a rental? Uh, we'd be looking at around about £1,300 per calendar month rental. Mm, not bad at all. What about sales figures? In my opinion, once this property is renovated, it should be looking at around about £300,000 to £320,000. This flat has space on its side. Even though it's ground floor, it's got light. It's in an area that can only go one way, and that is up. And with some layout changes and an extension, well, you could have a spectacular flat here with the bonus of this enormous garden. But I'd still investigate that structural crack. Let's go to auction and see who fancied it. So, lot 13, good sized flat, plus you've got a garden, I don't know, 200,000. It's worth that all day long. Thank you, 200, 205, 205 anywhere. 205, 210, 210, 215, 220. 216, 217, 218. This lot was proving popular, with something of a bidding battle ensuing. We rejoined the bidding at 240,000, 30 grand over the initial guide price. 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, yeah, 245, 246. 
247, 248, 247, standing up, first time, second time, third and last time. Have you all done? Sold 247. With her successful bid of 247,000, it was a clearly delighted Natalie. Well done, congratulations. She was at the auction with her friends and property finders, who were both called Phil. I met with Natalie and one of the Phils back at the flat to find out her plans. Natalie and Phil, congratulations. Now, Natalie, tell me about auction day. I, I've never done this before. I had no idea what to expect. Um, so the other Phil, who has been, he's been working with us on this project, basically offered to bid on my behalf. So um, he was bidding and I was kind of standing quite tensely next to him. He'd done it before, so he like waited right until the end to jump in. And I was a bit like, it's, you're losing him, get in there. Um, but it, yeah, it was fine. So you were there on auction day with Phil yeah. and other Phil. And other Phil. So what's your relationship with Phil and other Phil? They, um, they've found, they're property finders. They found the property for me um, and also work as developers. So they'll be um, project managing the whole development of this property. So you left it all to the other Phil to bid for you on auction day. Yes. Were you happy with the price you paid, Natalie? Yes, really happy. I love this flat. So I was prepared to pay way more than I'd been advised. <laughs> um, so I was really happy with it. It was the price that I was kind of given that that, that was around what I should be paying. But I was prepared to <laughs> basically give She was prepared to go significantly <laughs> over our recommended top price. I would give everything I own. So Natalie was determined to get this place and she's clearly enthusiastic about it. A really, really nice space, really bright, um, huge garden, exactly in the area that I wanted. Um, so yeah, I was over the moon. So you've got a good idea of what you want. Tell me, what is your vision for this flat, Natalie? Um, well, I'm hoping to move in a couple of years once it's rented, so it, it is really my flat <laughs> with a vision. Um, so I wanted two beds and we're going to extend at the back to, to make the the centre area slightly bigger with a, a nice size kind of uh, main bathroom. So you're actually going to be doing some building work here? Yeah. Have you thought about planning permission or are you likely to get this on permitted development? Well, the distance we want to move out of the back will be the permitted development um, distance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the end. The only thing we might need planning permission for is changing um, to the French doors and whether we change materials because permitted development will only work um, if we use wood everywhere. Um, if we were to use, say, UPVC, which are slightly more uh, efficient, then we'd need planning permissions to change those. Now, guys, buying at auction is not for the faint-hearted. Who did the research? Who read the legal pack or didn't read the legal pack? The lawyers read the legal pack and sent the report through. So have any issues cropped up since having bought this at auction? Um, there's been... Uh, getting the mortgage has been a bit prolonged, getting all the right bank statements across and things like that, but um, it seems to be going well, and there's a possibility that they're going to do some major works to the building of the freeholder, um, which will obviously make the building last a lot longer, but might add some cost. The costs of this communal work were unforeseen and will either need to be paid up front by Natalie or added to the monthly service charge. Will this impact on the budget? So what's your budget to do the work for your flat for the internal work here? Um, with the extension at the back, it would be 40000 well, And can she do it on that, do you think? Oh, comfortably. We really? expect to save our money on that, yes. I did notice a huge crack on the wall in the what's now the lounge. Mm -hmm. Has there been any structural movement with this house and did you get it surveyed? We did have a structural survey. Um, he came around with us um, about a week before the auction. Um, he says that possibly the end wall um, wasn't properly built to support the lintel across, um, but he says put up some props, knock the wall down, rebuild it. We're talking a day's work for a builder. So we're not talking subsidence? No, definitely So not. there's no huge worry with this? Definitely not. How much do you think it'll be worth once you've renovated it? Um, well, we think without the extension, it'll be worth about 350. Um, with the extension, probably up to 420, 400,000. So. How long, Phil, do you think it's going to take your guys to get in here and really knock the work out? Um, build time will be about six weeks. Then it'll be maybe the six weeks to wait for planning permission prior to that, which will make it take longer. So three to four months, we should be done. Well, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen here and what this place is going to look like. I can imagine it will be a fabulous pad once renovated. Guys, good luck with the build. It's been great meeting you both. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Phil, thank, thank you. you. Phil promises to turn this Hackney flat into something special. I am worried about that budget, although Nat seems to be calm and have full faith in her friend's expertise. You can join us later in the programme to find out what happens. Coming up in Sunderland, Tyne and Weir, this two-bed end of terrace is certainly not large. Yeah, it's a small place, but it's perfectly formed, as they say. Back to Hackney. How much of a learning curve has it been for Natalie? I wanted to learn from the project with the intention that perhaps I would do it again. But first in Devon, Ryan's clearly not sentimental about demolishing the old bungalow. I wasn't it... too sad to see it to go, <laughs> if I'm honest. It was blocking my view. We're back in the Devon village of Water. Electrician Ryan, wife Sarah and their three children bought this bungalow at auction for £140,000. It was in a pretty bad state, but had spectacular views, so it was clear that the land was the best selling point here. Demolishing the property and starting again was looking like the best option, especially given Sarah's area of expertise. My wife's a uh, chartered building surveyor, so she's oh. going to do all the drawings. Um, she's onto that already, not really my department. <laughs> she's doing all of that, but we want to uh, we hopefully move the house back slightly to keep the gardens on the south side um, because this is pretty much to the front of the plot and that would enable us, if they will let us do it, to live in this while we're building it, ah. which would be a nice little rent saver. The plan was to live in the existing bungalow whilst they built their new dream family home. That was going to be extra special, given that Ryan grew up in the village. However, building a brand new property on a different footprint was going to require planning permission, which was far from guaranteed. Well, we're back two years later to find out how they got on. <laughs> wow! Well, the old green bungalow is a thing of the past, and a little further up the hill stands a brand new house. Outside, there's still a bit to do. The exterior is to be rendered and the garden landscaped. But inside, there's a spectacular family home, which makes the very most of the incredible location. So this is our open plan kitchen. Uh, we designed it, we wanted a big island. Um, that was the main thing with a breakfast bar, so that the children and that can sit up to it in the mornings. Um, yeah, so we've got solid wood worktops, really wanted that for the natural feel. Um, coming through here, I built the ham, the brick piers, um, just to give it a more country cottage kind of look. Um, we haven't quite yet got the oven, but that will be the right size one day. Um, coming around, we've got the solid wood flooring, um, and then onto the big Anderson patio doors, which uh, we're really pleased with. And uh, beyond that, the view. Come back home, back on your own now. Although the old bungalow is now a pile of rubble, it served a very useful purpose. It allowed the family to live on site whilst the building of their new home took place. And it seems Sarah became very attached to the old place. It was quite an emotional day when that one that went because obviously it was our home for nearly two years, and you know it was the children's home. And I wasn't it, too it... sad to see it to go. <laughs> I'm honest, it was blocking my view. <laughs> but it it served its purpose. We were, I don't think we would have been able to uh, um, achieve what we had. Um, with the budget if we hadn't been able to live on site. Living on site gave Sarah time to design the perfect house for the plot and the family. By using the lie of the land, she managed to create an upstairs that doesn't look like one. In fact, there are three levels to this house. On the ground level, there's the kitchen, diner, sitting room and an office study. On the first level, there's the entrance hallway and three good-sized bedrooms. Plus a huge family bathroom with a walk-in shower. On the top level, there's another sitting room and a spare bedroom. Because the site's on the slope, that's how, where the designs come from, really, because it meant we didn't have to dig out so far at the back, so that's why it ended up split level. It was Sarah's idea. I can't take the credit <laughs> for that. 
I've never designed anything on this scale before. I've always dealt with sort of small refurbs, uh, extensions, that kind of thing. So from a professional point of view, it was quite a challenge for me. I knew I had to get it right. We couldn't afford to make any mistakes. By taking their time and working with the layout of the plot, Sarah's design and Ryan's building skills have produced an original, surprising and extremely successful family home. We wanted the rooms to flow. We wanted to keep all the sort of the sleeping accommodation at the back. We wanted a traditional feel as well, the log burners and stuff, didn't we? Yeah. We didn't want it ultra-modern, too clinical, you know, the kitchen sort of, you know, wooden worktops and stuff. We've not, we're not, we want it to be homely. Ryan and Sarah spent £140,000 buying the property and £110,000 getting it to this stage, bringing their total outlay to £250,000. It's time to find out what two local property experts think of all their hard work. I am surprised at the amount of space they have here and the size of the rooms. I do like the, the top bedroom, which um, has the picture windows overlooking the moors towards Plymouth Sound. On a, a beautiful sunny day, the view would be absolutely stunning. I think the standard of craftsmanship is fantastic. Often you see properties that have been renovated or rebuilt um, in not such a nice finish, but this has got a superb finish. The care and attention to detail shown by Ryan and Sarah have clearly impressed the experts. So what do they think this brand new house is worth? I would look to put this property up for sale for 400 to 425,000 pounds. If I was to put this onto the market in today's market conditions, I would hope to achieve around the 450,000 pound mark. Those valuations would give an incredible profit of between 150 and 200,000 pounds before costs and expenses. Great. Excellent. That's about where we thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's good. It's nice to know that there's some money in the place? Yeah. Not that we're selling them, we're keeping it. I'm delighted that Ryan and Sarah have made such a success of this project. They had the vision to see just what a fabulous location it is and the talent to make the very best of it. We sat in, a, in the old building and we wondered if it would ever actually be there, didn't we? But now it's here, you know, we're really pleased and... It's like it's always been here. Yeah, it's whole. This is Sunderland in Tyne and Weir. Long famed for shipbuilding, now it's car manufacture and new technology such as IT and telecommunications that lead the way. Well, looking around, you might think that I'm in some remote suburb of Sunderland, but how wrong you would be. A 15-minute brisk walk takes you right into the city centre, and then even closer than that, there is the Tyne and Weir metro station. Now, the metro is amazing. It connects the whole of this region from the Newcastle Airport area down to the coast of Sunderland itself. So, in a nutshell, you're far from isolated. What am I here to see? It's this. It's an end of terrace. Had a guide price of 20 to 30,000 quid. Let's take a Look. 20 to 30,000 doesn't sound much, especially as it looks as though it's in pretty good nick from the outside, as far as I can tell. But what's in store as I gear up to take a look around inside? So, not a lot of money, but do you get much house for that? Well, at first glance, yes, you do. A couple of nice practicalities. You've got a little sort of entrance porch there to keep the the noise and the cold out. Um, an open plan staircase, which definitely gives a nice feeling to this living room area. Now, it's not huge, but you have got this sort of slightly bay window, which, which certainly adds a little bit more space. Um, it obviously needs a lot of refurbishment, but yeah, it's a small place, but it's perfectly formed, as they say. Through into the kitchen, which again, you know, this has reached the end of its useful life, needs to be replaced. Um, but I'm not seeing anything that worries me so far. How big the garden is at the rear is anyone's guess, since it's so overgrown. But at least it's a proper space, not just a yard. Unfortunately, the word space is something that can't be applied upstairs. The bathrooms are standard size, but the bedrooms are small. Very small. 
Well, out to the front of the property and round the side, and you find a little bit of garden, well, it's a bit of grass. So the first thing I'm thinking is, is it worth building some kind of extension on the property? Well, the answer in short is no, because the amount of money it would cost to build it, you would never get back either in terms of the value of the property or extra money you could get for rent. So don't do it. Well, that was straightforward. I'm afraid this petite house is what it is, a petite house. But then, as far as rental goes, maybe good things really do come in small packages. Well, just because the purchase price is quite cheap doesn't mean that rental income is similarly so. A house like this one in good condition would rent for around £450 a month. So let's say you got this for around £30,000 and spent £10,000 doing it up. That's £40,000 you got invested. £450 a month in rent. That's a 13% yield. Now, you may well have to pay money to a lettings agent and you've obviously got to consider tax, but either way, that's a whoop do's dog tail wagging ka-ching investment. <laughs> this part of Sunderland isn't the most expensive and agreed the waste ground at the back isn't easy on the eye. But if you manage to get this property for around the guide price of 20 to 30,000, then maybe this part of Sunderland could be someone's wonderland. We asked along a local estate agent to hear his opinions of the property. This area of Sundon is a popular suburb um, situated conveniently for access to the city centre. It'll be popular with young professionals, first-time buyers, and also for buy-to-let opportunists. How would those figures stack up? First, rental. Yes, it would rent very well to young professionals. Um, the actual return would be around about the 375 mark, um, possibly up to 400, but certainly no more than that. And what could a resale achieve? I think if the property was refurbished to a good standard, then the resale value at the moment would probably be in the region of 50 to 55,000. Well, the house is certainly cheap, and with those potential rental returns, it's also very cheerful. But it would also make a lovely home with good transport links and proximity to the city centre. What's not to like? Let's see who agreed when it went under the hammer. Lot 37, guided at 20 to 30,000. Put me in the bottom of the guy, 20 to get me away at 20. 10 then, put me in at 10,000. 10 we've got, 12, 12 and 14. 16 anywhere, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 anywhere, at 20,000, 21, 22, at 23, 24. 25. The house may be small, but the potential had been spotted by several bidders who were fiercely contesting this lot. We pick it up when the bidding reaches £35,000. At £35,000 then, for the first time, take quarter. One more. 35 and a quarter, 35 and a half, 35,750. 36, at 36,000. At £36,000, £250. 36,250, 36 and a half. At £36,250 for the first time. At £36,250 for the second. £36,250 for the third and final time. Sold. Thank you very much indeed. The successful bidder who secured the lot for 36,250 quid was Graham. I'm walking, hear the thing and I'm talking. And you and me, I'm hoping that you come back to me. Graham's a Sunderland local and for the past 20 to 30 years has been running his own business in home improvements. So he sounds like the man for this job. I met him back at the property to find out what made him take on this investment. Graham, good to meet you. And you. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. Well, I came to see it before and uh, I quite like the area. It is improving and I think really it's a, it's a good start at home. It can appeal to a lot of different people. Um, so I think it would be good for both rental and possibly resale for a first purchase for uh, perhaps a young couple or something like that. Right, so is this something that you've done before, this kind of thing? It is. It's something I'm getting back into. I used to um, 
developed houses quite a few years ago then came out of the marketplace and uh, basically I think now's the time to, to get back involved so that's the, that's the plan at the moment. So what was your experience then? Were you in the financial services industry? Or uh, no, originally I was an estate agent. Oh, okay. <laughs> quite a few years ago and from there I've been into design so I actually designed kitchens and bathrooms and interiors oh. so I've done that for some time with my own business and uh, as I say I've always been involved in property in some shape or form. Right, so why Sunderland then? Um, it's an area I know well uh, from here. Um, I think the prices here are very good. Uh, you can get a very good return on them. It's an up-and-coming area and also um, really I think a little, a little bit of local expertise helps a long way in knowing what you're doing and knowing how to do it. And that's a good point. It's no use just buying a house if you don't know your market, how much it's worth or what you should do with it. But Graham obviously does get results. Why does Graham feel this house will give him a healthy result? Uh, it's part of a new estate, or fairly new estate. It's the end of a terrace and structurally very, very sound. Obviously needs a fair bit doing to it, uh, but we'll strip it back, do all that, and it will be a nice little home. So talk me through exactly what you're going to do to it to sort it out. Exactly. Uh, as I said, we'll strip it right way back. So um, the, the mock ceilings will come off, uh, all the rubbish, the broken floors will come up, uh, the garden will machete down and uh, <laughs> see quite what's there. And then we'll start probably on the outside, uh, repair the windows. Uh, there's a little problem with uh, a guttering outside that needs to be done straight away. That's created the damp in one of the That's bedrooms. That's created the yeah. damp in the back bedroom, so we'll get that sorted as soon as we possibly can. Replaster and then fit the new kitchen, fit the new bathroom, and then see the flooring and decoration and things like that. What's the cost for the renovation? Um, I've got about £8,000, I think, to play with. I'm hoping to get it done a little bit less than that. And the time scale? I would think within six to eight weeks on the outside, it'll be ready to either put back on the market or available for, uh, for renting. And what will make you make the decision as to whether or not you're going to rent it or sell it on? Uh, basically, the valuations we get and the interest we get when the house is done. If it you know, generates a lot of interest at first or we'll have a, a good potential buyer, it'll probably go and we'll take whatever money we can get out of it. Uh, if the money's not there or there's no interest, rather than have it standing, I'll take a view, rent it, and then look to do something in five years' time with it. So what would you expect it to maybe resell for? I would think in mid-60s. And um, rent? Four two five four fifty. <laughs> Graham obviously has his business head on and knows the key to making this place work financially is to keep it simple. The sums add up. He knows what needs to be done and there seems to be no holding him back. Moving on then, what's next for you? Personally, uh, we're looking for more houses. I've bought uh, five in total last month. Oh, wh wh what? <laughs> So uh, we're, we're jumping into it. Um, I have some other people who are interested in me sourcing houses for them. So I'll be doing a combination of my own and finding houses for other people yes. and uh, really getting into it and, and just seeing what, what bargains are available. Well, listen, congratulations. Good luck with it. Thanks very I'm much indeed. Look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Graham's got himself a great little property here and I think the rental route is definitely the way to go because onward sales of this place may be difficult in the current market. Still, will he manage to get the yields he's hoping for? You can find out later in the show. Well, time and tide wait for no man. The weeks and months have passed. How have our buyers got on with their DIY efforts? Mm, the work should have been done, but you never know. Shall we go back and find out? Let's do it. Back now to Hackney in East London, where postgraduate student Natalie had bought this two-bedroom lower ground flat with good-sized garden at auction for 247000 Under the guidance of her friend and property finder Phil, the plan was to renovate the flat completely and add a small extension at the back. Despite the state of the place, it seemed as though Natalie's enthusiasm was threatening to get the better of her. I love this flat. So I was prepared for way more than I'd been advised. <laughs> um, so I was really happy with it. It was the price that I was kind of given that that, that was around what I should be paying. But I was prepared to 
basically given She's all to go my significantly money. significantly <laughs> over our recommended top price. We're back 12 months later to see if Natalie's passion for this project has paid off. Well, clearly she's worked very hard as the property has undergone considerable change. From the outside, it's clear that Natalie has not gone ahead with the extension, but the exterior door has been moved, so access to the garden is no longer through the bedroom. So what was involved to create all these changes? We haven't actually altered anything. It was more undoing it and redoing it. So um, even though it looks exactly the same, it's all everything has had to be replaced. Despite the layout remaining the same, that's about the only thing that's unchanged. The flat's been completely transformed. The original plan was for property finders Phil and Phil to project manage the renovation, but Natalie decided to take a more hands-on approach. Um, I wanted to learn from the project with the intention that perhaps I would do it again. And in order to do that, I needed to work with a company that allowed me kind of more input and a bit more flexibility. So we agreed that it's probably best for me to go off and find some builders who could show me the ropes. Yeah, show me, yeah, show me. Combining studying for a master's degree in psychology with a first ever renovation project's no easy task. But Natalie has clearly risen to the challenge with ease. Um, so before, there was the door over that side, which we moved over here to gain an extra bedroom and access from the kitchen. And as you came out, there was a big shed, which was just full of gas canisters and um, kind of big sewage systems. And this was just covered in weeds and nettles. Um, yes, we cleared it all, um, turfed it and paved a patio area. So what about the time scale for the project? Was it completed on time? Um, my original time scale was three months and it's taken nearly a year. With that considerable overrun, how did the original budget of £40,000 fare? We ended up spending £45,000 um, plus an additional £14,000 for the external work, which um, was down to the freeholders. We asked along two local estate agents to give us their opinion of the flat as it is now. The finish is top quality, um, it's a quality refurb and there's a, a great attention to detail in here. I think it's a very nice finish. Um, she's uh, complimented a lot of her modern attributes as well with some original features which have really complimented the property well. The layout's excellent, they've made excellent use of the space, um, they've even squeezed an ensuite into the front bedroom which is really, really useful. Natalie bought the property for £247,000 and spent a further £59,000 on renovations, making a total outlay of £306,000 so far. So what could the value of the property be if it was put up for sale? Um, if I was going to place this property on the market, I'd be looking to place it at around about £430,000. The property could be sold for in the region of £440,000. That would be a potential profit of between one hundred and twenty-four and £134,000 before costs and taxes. Wow. I hadn't um, asked about resale values at all because I was somewhat concerned that I may have lost money. <laughs> So that is really exciting and, yeah, really amazing. I was actually dreading that part today. <laughs> but, yeah, that's brilliant. If the property were to be rented out, what could the possible monthly income be? By calling the month, if I was going to rent this property, I'd be looking at placing it around about £1,700. We could rent the property out for, per calendar month, £1,875. <laughs> 
Based on those figures, Natalie would be able to earn an annual rental yield of about 7%. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's really good. I was, yeah, aiming for around 1700 so, yeah, that's brilliant. So has the project been worthwhile for Natalie now that the transformation's complete? I think now that you've told me the figures, it's definitely all been worth it. There were, there were definitely highs and lows. There were minutes when I, I, I hated coming here, like, so many tears, but overall I've really enjoyed it and I'm pretty proud of my accomplishment. <laughs>Back to Sunderland in Tyne and Weir now, where earlier we saw this two-bed end of terrace house, which was tired, shabby and run down. It badly needed attention from someone who runs a home improvement business, when in walked Graham, who runs such a business. What are the chances of that? He bought it for 36250 and reckons that prices in Sunderland represent good value. I think the prices here are very good. Uh, you can get a very good return on them. It's an up-and-coming area, and also, um, really, I think a little, a little bit of local expertise helps a long way in knowing what you're doing and knowing how to do it. Local man Graham aimed to turn this house around on a budget of £8,000 and have it up for the resale market or rental in six to eight weeks. When we returned 11 weeks later, we were hoping to see if Graham's skills in home improvement had put the sun back into this part of Sunderland. Certainly with fresh paint on the front door and on the upper wall, plus new double glazing, the house is now much easier on the eye. Gone is the shabby front room to be replaced by a far more tasteful sitting room with new flooring and a gas effect electric fire. kitchen space was small, but it has also had the benefit of Graham's eye, with new contemporary units installed. In here we have the kitchen, and what I've realised with these houses, one of the biggest problems is lack of storage space. So I was very pleased, in, a, in a quite a tight area anyway, to get a big bank of storage units like this, uh, which provides mountains of storage space, and indeed in here we have the uh, fridge and the freezer and everything as well. Over here we have uh, more of an idea, we have uh, the cooking area here with a new hob, extractor and oven, obviously we've got the drawers, and in here we have the uh, washing machine with a sink unit and everything there. So it's quite compact but it is very usable, so I was quite pleased with the design and the fact that we have been able to get a, an eating area in here as well. Upstairs, the bathroom has been stripped and gutted and a stylish suite along with new tiling has been put in. The landing and the bedrooms have been done in simple but effective decor, leaving a blank canvas for whoever buys this. The rear garden is also more attractive now after an impressive tidy-up with a lawn laid and a patio area to relax on. And it seems like the wasteland at the back is undergoing a transformation all of its own. Uh, when we first uh, had a look at this site, over there was just basically a derelict site with uh, some concrete foundations. Uh, I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't know when. And obviously I was delighted when about a month after we bought the place, uh, work began. And what it's going to be is an incubator unit for uh, offices. Uh, apparently it's going to give a jobs for about 100 local people, hopefully. And really I'm delighted that this area is getting tidied up and also it should increase the value of this property because it's finished and um, I say there's a lot more going on generally with the area and it'll look a lot nicer and uh, a bit more employment. Back inside, the old timber ceiling's been replaced with walls and ceilings skimmed. With no gas supply to the estate, Graham had new storage heaters installed. Cleaning out the gutters solved the damp problem in the front bedroom, so it's been a pain-free renovation for Graham. But apart from doing the design and decor here, was he hands-on with the actual renovation? I do have people who work for me generally, and unfortunately they were fairly busy as well, and I do have my own source of uh, labour in the form of uh, four sons who have all helped uh, reasonably willingly in one shape or form uh, with the decoration and, and help me organise and keep an eye on what's happening. 
Ah, that old one, exploited the kids. And it sounds like Graham may not have even picked up a paintbrush. But he has been busy, because along with running his home improvement business, he's renovating five other properties. So it's no wonder the timescale for this refurbishment shifted from his six to eight week schedule to 11 weeks. How did his £8,000 budget cope? I was hoping to actually bring in a little bit less than that. As it's turned out, it's been a little bit more. We're just short of 9,000. Most of that went on uh, the electric rewire and also uh, the landscaping to the, the, the garden, the back and the front, which we were hoping just to, to be able to cut down and get something de decent out of. That wasn't the case. We've had to go back to scratch and, and redo it. So that's bumped the, uh, the budget up to uh, a little bit more than where we wanted to be. that to the original purchase price of £36,250 and the total outlay here is approximately £45,000. Time to ask two local estate agents if Graham's work has made this property a winner. I think it's a lovely house, very nice for the area, it's been done quite well. Uh, the finishing is not perfect but it's certainly just about right uh, to move into. The property has been renovated to a high standard of finish for an investment property. This will attract a higher quality tenant and inevitably increase resale value. But will the returns exceed Graham's possible spend of £45,000, first if sold? I would mark this property at asking price £69,950, looking to achieve offers between £60 and £70,000. In terms of a sale price, I would market the property at around £65,000 with a view to achieving about £60,000. That's probably about right. I would think it's more near the 70000 I'd be looking for. Uh, I certainly wouldn't sell it for less than sixty-five, on the basis that four to five years ago these properties were changing hands for about £90,000. Those two figures could give Graham a possible pre-tax profit of between fifteen and £25,000. But with rental a possible option, what sort of income could he command? I'd expect the property to achieve £525 to £550 per calendar month rental income. I think the house in its current state would achieve approximately £425 to £450 per calendar month. Uh, the 550 is probably about right, that's what we were hoping to achieve. Uh, as it happens, we now have a tenant which we're very happy with. We've uh, checked her out and uh, she's looking to take it from the beginning of next month and we've agreed a rent of £525 a month. That's an excellent annual yield of 14%. But Graham is still considering selling on, as this newly transformed property now makes it an attractive proposition to other investors. So overall, I reckon it's all gone well for him. Uh, yes, I think this has been a success, uh, bearing in mind what we paid for it, the work that's been done has been quite involved, um, but I think we've come up with a good, good product at the end of the day and I think it's uh, very attractive for whoever wants to take it either for a rent or, or to buy it. We'll have lots more auction properties to show you next time on Homes Under the Hammer. So join us then to find out what happens when that hammer comes crashing down. Oh, join us then. <laughs> And Homes Under the Hammer is back on BBC One at 10am on Monday. On the way next, we're in Gloucester, where not one but two sets of teams take on the Bargain Hunt Challenge.